We often see Rocket Lab's rocket launches recommended to us on YouTube. And we see so-called electron launches here and there when we take a look at the upcoming rocket launches on Spaceflight Now. Aside from obviously being a rocket company, who exactly is Rocket Lab? What are their goals? And how much progress have they made so far? Well, starting off, Rocket Lab was started way back in 2006 by Peter Beck in Auckland, New Zealand. Before starting Rocket Lab, Peter had been working at New Zealand's Industrial Research Limited. As the name suggests, Industrial Research was a government-funded research institution aimed to promote scientific innovation and subsequent economic growth. It's kind of like a government-funded Y Combinator for science and technology. Anyways, at Industrial Research, Peter found himself working on smart materials as well as superconductors. Though he did decently enjoy his work here, Peter says that he realized that staying here would prevent him from achieving his childhood dream of working with rockets, as he says, quote, it's always been about the rocket for me. But just because he was all about the rocket didn't mean that he was insane just yet. At the time, like the average person interested in rockets, his goal was to simply join a large rocket company, not start one himself. As a result, Peter would take off a month to go visit NASA and talk to NASA engineers and rocket scientists. Though he approached the opportunity with great enthusiasm, as he got to know NASA engineers, his conviction of joining a large rocket company slowly dwindled away. He later revealed that joining an organization like NASA would leave himself as a minuscule gear of a giant machine, and he would have very little influence in the overall project. After this quick realization, Peter swiftly stepped into the crazy people side and decided that he was going to start his own rocket company. Fortunately for Peter, his time working at industrial research did not only provide him with a solid science background, but even more importantly, many key connections. One such connection was a serial venture capitalist named Stephen Tyndall. The exact amount of money Stephen invested in the company is unknown, but it is assumed to be in the millions if not tens of millions as Stephen has a history of investing over $150 million into various startups. Since then, Rocket Lab has also received a cool $25 million from the New Zealand government, and another notable investor is of course, Lockheed Martin, who is known to have poured significant amounts of capital into Rocket Lab. With the foundation in place, Peter and his team set on developing the Atea-1. The Atea-1 was more of a proof of concept rocket, and was extremely small. The entire rocket was just 60 kilograms and was capable of carrying just 2 kilograms to 150 kilometers into the sky. Though this wasn't a breakthrough rocket by any means, it did allow them to cautiously approach developing bigger rockets. Moreover, it didn't take too long either. Rocket Lab was able to successfully launch the Atea 1 just a few years later in November of 2009, which gave them the title of the first private company to reach space in the southern hemisphere. During the same time, Rocket Lab was also focused on fundraising as well. And I don't mean just raising money through regular old venture funding, but also by developing parts for other aerospace companies. Rocket Lab developed systems for DARPA, Aerojet Rocketdyne, and Lockheed Martin in their early years. But as they built up sufficient funding, they stepped away from such projects. Anyways, Rocket Lab was able to finally turn their focus onto orbital class rockets in 2010, after the Operationally Responsive Space Office awarded them with a contract to study low-cost small satellite launchers. Rocket Lab would subsequently spend three years researching low-cost small satellite launch solutions, which would ultimately lead them to the Electron program in 2013. The Electron Orbital Rocket was a two-stage rocket that utilized the Rutherford engine, named after the famous New Zealand-born scientist Ernest Rutherford. Though their naming scheme would stay true to their New Zealand heritage, Rocket Lab would move their headquarters from Auckland, New Zealand to Los Angeles, California. However, operations would continue in Auckland as well. Following two years of development, Rocket Lab would finally unveil the Electron rocket to the world in 2015, which would win them a $6.95 million contract from NASA. Two more years later, Rocket Lab would finally be ready to put their Electron rocket to the test with a test flight on May 25, 2017. Unfortunately, however, this test flight would never reach orbit. 
At the same time though, the launch wasn't a large catastrophe either. The Electron rocket would successfully complete first stage burn, stage separation, second stage ignition, and fairing separation. Despite all of this, the rocket did not reach orbital velocity. But as I said, though the rocket did not succeed in accomplishing the final desired result, the Electron was successful at several of the initial stages of the launch, and the test flight gave Rocket Lab a plethora of data to work with. Using this data and troubleshooting a plethora of potential issues, Rocket Lab would set on a second flight in January of 2018, which would be successful. Since then, Rocket Lab has successfully launched several Electron rockets into space, and that brings us to where we are today. Electron seems cool and all, but what purpose does it exactly serve in the market? Well, though you may not realize the scale of the rocket when looking at zoomed in shots of the rocket, the Electron is actually super small. For example, Take a look at the size comparison with the Space Shuttle and Falcon Heavy. The Electron is well below half of their size. While that might seem like a disadvantage at first glance, this is exactly what Rocket Lab has been aiming for. They wanted to develop a small, super low cost rocket that was still super powerful. Electron is only capable of carrying 150 kilograms into orbit, but it can reach up to 500 kilometers above sea level. And the best part is that each Electron launch only costs $7.5 million, which they're actually working on driving down to $5 million. To put this in perspective, a Falcon 9 launch costs about $57 million per launch. Now of course, we also have to keep in mind that Falcon 9 can lift 22,800 kilograms into low Earth orbit, which is 152 times the mass Electron is capable of carrying into low Earth orbit. At that rate, it would cost $1.14 billion for Rocket Lab to deliver the same payload into space as a Falcon 9 rocket. So if you're a large scale satellite launcher, it doesn't make very much sense to go with Rocket Lab. But that's okay, Rocket Lab isn't targeting this market. They're targeting companies that don't need to deliver anywhere near 23,000 kilograms into space. Of course, SpaceX's rideshare program offers a pretty good solution for some of these companies. But some other companies have specific specifications for the flight that can only be met by dedicated rocket launch. And in such scenarios, it makes sense for them to go to Rocket Lab to deliver their payloads into space. So that's the current position of Rocket Lab within the space launch market. They're a niche player serving the needs of small scale launchers with specific needs and requirements. But what about the future of Rocket Lab? Well, Rocket Lab has been working on the reusability of their orbital booster. Till very recently, all of Rocket Lab's launches were fully expendable, thus requiring a brand new rocket for each launch. However, since 2019, the company has been working on making the majority of their rocket reusable. In fact, just last week, Rocket Lab succeeded in recovering their first electron booster after parachuted into the ocean. Moving forward, however, the method they're planning to use to recover boosters is quite unconventional. They're not looking to land their booster like SpaceX does, nor dump it into the ocean and then fish it out like they just did. Rather, they want the booster to parachute down just like we saw this time. But instead of letting it dive into the ocean, Rocket Lab is looking to send out a helicopter that will snatch the parachute and thus the booster as well and fly it to the desired location. This is quite a unique approach and may very well be possible with their booster given the much smaller size. Aside from this, Rocket Lab has also been hard at work developing and testing 3D printed engines to drastically reduce cost. In fact, last year, the company reached its 100th 3D printed Rutherford engine. But looking past reducing the cost of spaceflight through improving reusability and creating cheaper parts, Rocket Lab doesn't actually have any known super ambitious goals such as reaching the moon or Mars or even providing super fast point to point travel within the Earth. Taking a look at their company mission, it's pretty straightforward and modest. Rocket Lab aims to create a new era of small satellite launch technology by reducing cost and increasing frequency. By accomplishing this, they hope to help companies, students, scientists, and researchers learn and understand space better. Quite a stark contrast between Musk's vision of terraforming Mars or Bezos' vision of off-planeting all manufacturing and energy production, 
or even Richard Branson's vision of providing space tourism. From what we know about Rocket Lab today, it's not clear if they're even looking to ever get into crewed flights at all. It looks like Peter just really liked rockets and wanted to work on rockets. And so, he created a relatively small niche rocket company that fulfills longing for rocket science. Truly a refreshingly modest vision in an industry filled with high hopes and massive dreams. Where do you guys think Rocket Lab is headed? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys love seeing competition in the space market. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.